Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your presence. Today, we're gonna talk about uh, natural lighting. As, as you know, we talk about natural lighting during the previous sessions, but uh, this session is dedicated to the natural lighting, very brief, very practical. So we're gonna discover all the, all the attitude, all the uh, criteria of the natural lighting step by step. And uh, we, uh, at the beginning, we discovered the three main pillar of the energy performance, which tell us how natural lighting can affect to different aspects of, uh, of our life. And uh, after that, we have some examples of uh, using or hiring the natural lighting. And at the end, we have uh, some uh, technical resources for uh, calculating all uh, aspects of the uh, canopies, awning, and so on. At the right side, we have four different circles, and it shows reading, responding, thinking and talking on the phone. What is, what's this small uh, red or, uh, or yellow circles are standing for? They are showing the, the level of the concentration of the users and, and the time when the users were, uh, were, uh, was distracted and looking to the, to the other side. As you see, when the users was reading, almost all their concentration was on the, on the task. But when they were responding or talking to the phone or thinking they were, they were all the time kind of, so we can sort of, we can say they were distracted by the window, which is the source of light. What it, what it tells us, it tells us the importance of the, of the daylighting and, uh, it tells us how we should consider that. And uh, uh, it's, it tells us uh, how human nature is attracted by the natural light and how much we need that. In that building, we have this pattern. So uh, at, the, uh, at the interior side, we get very little small, uh, small, uh, pattern or patches of the shadow, which uh, brings uh, brings the users excitement and the uh, what does it mean ex excitement? It uh, it you know it gives you a different feeling by the by the time passing. When time passing, uh, this the shadow is moving on the on the floor and uh, your changing and you won't get bored because of the too many details and those details are constantly changing. And here they, they, uh, they ask question uh, of, the, uh, of the users to, uh, to kind of uh, giving a status or a level for each of these spaces. Is it an exciting space? Or a, uh, or a complex, interesting, or pleasant. So uh, by that, it, uh, it, uh, I mean, if you were in that place, what kind of experience you would get? And here at the very bottom, we have number one to number five. So number five is a stand for very exciting and number one is standing for very, let's say calm or uh, calm places. And here they, uh, they choose this, uh, this uh, irregular pattern as a very exciting, exciting uh, a pattern for the window. What it tells you as a designer, just for a minute, think with yourself what it tells you. It tells even if your if even if your space is like a shoebox, uh, by the pattern of the sunlight and the shadow you can get on uh, uh, in in the interior side, you can make your users 
excited and uh, avoiding them from being bored and giving them a different uh, experience. So it's going to be a pleasant, interesting um, experience, not a boring place which you just want to escape from that. And uh, here, again, we have a, a different pattern. They study and uh, they did a survey from uh, lots of people and they asked them, uh, it's, they are a real pattern. They uh, is not a, just, uh, is not just a uh, illustration. No, it's a real, real space. And they asked them to uh, score, uh, to, uh, give each space a score to know which one is more excited and which one is more calm or less calm. So at the bottom you have the uh, you have the uh, legend that helps you to know which one is the most exciting and which one is the least calming space. And as you see, those is, uh, those. Uh, window with the with the most complex pattern are graded as the mo uh, as an most exciting and pl uh, pleasing space. So it tells you if you have a boring place, this is one of the solution you can use for your space. So, so again, this is the se section clear story, and here we have the main window. And uh, here it's a, uh, you know, it can be a good question if we ask ourselves where we mainly use this kind of clear story, where we need a proper amount of light and where we, where the light is very important for us. Okay, we talked about these things previous session, where, where we need to control lighting, where the light was very vital or critical, critical for us, wherever we have the task, wherever we have the task, we wanted a right amount of light. Where, what was our task? Reading, cooking, preparing, washing, all the action we have through our life. So here it's a school, especially an elementary school, and our kids' eye is very important for us. So we want to we want we want to give them a proper amount of light. Why? Because of because they are the next generation of this nation, and they are the one who gonna make this country. So their eyes is is the future eyes of this nation. It is very important. They should be educated very well and properly. So the sun is critical and the light is critical. We want everything. Uh, fastidious and right at the point. And uh, here, another example, more contemporary example. And uh, again, it's a school, but here we have, uh, as you see, the space is more generous, more open, and we have a vast open or public spaces because, you know, it's more contemporary. We are more generous and open, open-handed to, uh, to share space with, with each other and enjoy the public. And the other example from the legend architect, Alvar Aalto, and uh, it's a church. It's a, a well-known uh, well church and designed, especially because of its uh, proper, uh, proper uh, lighting, uh, the way architect uh, hired the natural lighting from the clear story or the skylight. And uh, here, another legend or star architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, almost the most, uh, the most uh, well-known or uh, influenced architect in the 20th century, in uh, unbelief of lots of experts. And here is a mansion, is a house. As you see, another approach, again, light come from the ceiling or the sky uh, sky window and and raining or pouring to the interior space uh, imagine you are uh, just uh, pay attention to the to the uh, middle picture where where is the uh, where we have the furniture around the uh, around the fireplace you are sitting there among your family and it's like 
you are under the pouring of the light. So as you see, we have lots of tools in our hands to play with that. We just should, should think and uh, hire this uh, method, hire these uh, opportunities to, uh, to, uh, to elevate the space. And here we have a museum. And uh, again, you see uh, why, why we use that in a museum. As I told you, uh, the skylight bring us a very soft and safe light. So why it's soft? Why it's uh, safe? Because uh, when it comes to the interior space, we break that too many times. You cannot see the source of light. You cannot, you won't get any glare. You just get the illumination. You won't see any, uh, any source of light. Do you see anything? No. You just get the light. Your space is bright and ready to function. This is the way uh, indirect lighting is working. And here in this picture at, at the right, you can see the glazing here. So this is where light gets through the building. And here, another fantastic, outstanding example from another legend, star architect, Mario Botta. And this is a hotel. And as you see, we cannot, please guys, do not forget that. Please keep it in mind. The climate is very, very critical. As you see, it's, I choose these pictures intentionally. As you see, there is too much snow there. So that it tells us this building is located in a cold climate. So they won't get too much uh, too much uh, sunlight. There isn't too much uh, solar heat there. So uh, here in this sort of climate, architect, architects are more open-handed to invite light through the space. And uh, the more light you get, the happier you are because, uh, you know, light is very precious there. And here, uh, we have uh, another approach towards uh, skylight and uh, at the uh, right uh, top we have the uh, uh, bird view of the building. At its left side we have a kind of close shot from the uh, from the uh, the opening. Uh, this opening is not the original one. The original one, one was doomed, but they replaced it with uh, the flat one because the doom was kind of uh, difficult for the maintenance, cleaning, and uh, you know the managing the uh, the the light to the space. And as you see here uh, at the bottom, in the again this. Uh, the, this building's function is a library, again, where we need proper amount of light. And when you, when you see, uh, if, uh, imagine you are standing under these uh, illumination. When you look to the ceiling, uh, it's, it's, like, you know, it's like you have a fluorescence uh, lighting in, the, uh, in your fixtures, but unbelievably, it's just the right design which makes the natural lighting like uh, uh, artificial lighting. And here, uh, this architect actually uh, won the, uh, this year uh, Pritesger Prize, uh, which is like a, a Nobel uh, in science. And uh, this is a very primary approach towards uh, getting a sky, uh, skylight. And uh, it's just some, uh, uh, pottery and they cut that from the middle or the bottom and put it in the in the ceiling and after that they pull concrete around that and the uh, the outcome is uh, this uh, playful joyful interior lighting and uh, tubular skylight and uh, this uh, this is another 
uh, another tools or method we can use for illuminating the interior space and and is uh, is uh, consider uh, or encompass three different uh, three different uh, component. The first one is here this the small uh, uh, acrylic uh, dome and uh, the the second part is this uh, uh, cylindrical uh, part and here we have this transparent diffuser lens and uh, you know uh, if you ask me what is the function of this here this dome probably reduced the uh, uh, UV uh, UV part of the sunlight and here in this uh, tubular or uh, cylindrical part the sunlight will be reflected till we get till it gets to this part and uh, the heat the good part is that if we have any heat from the sunlight it goes to the uh, attic here not getting through the building so it's very beneficial uh, when we use the tubular skylight why because we just get the light the, uh, we won't get the heat but even if we need the heat this heat goes to the attic so if uh, we are living in a cold climate we can use uh, this kind of passive approach to provide uh, uh, or to reduce our electricity bill or save energy. So we talk about this and here there is more links. So you, uh, it, tell, it shows you how to install that, how it works and uh, how uh, the example of the actual one, you can, you can watch that later. And uh, here you see, you can see the uh, actual space is unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, for me, actually, I really like that. When you look at this ceiling, when you check that ceiling, you cannot believe it's not artificial light. It's just a tubular lighting. It's, it's unbelievable, you know, to, to provide the interior lighting of this big space with kind of, with just a natural light especially when you don't have a direct, uh, you don't have a direct access to the light. So you get the, uh, you get the natural light indirectly to the space and it doesn't matter. You are not, uh, you know, adjusted to that. And you see that in a variety of the uh, function here is the uh, recreational or the uh, sport space here is the retail, here we have a grocery store, here we have another store. So it tells us we can hire that wherever we want it. Oh, Parsa, I know that store, the Bullen, Colorado. It's a window, like this is like this, exactly like this. But at the very top side, we have a component which we call it light shelves. The light shelves geometry, uh, geometry, which is OG curve. What does it mean OG curve? So here it can be concave or the other way around. So the sun, the sunlight, when it gets here, it will spread too many times, but not to the space. It will reflect to the, reflect to the uh, ceiling and it, it will be even it's gonna be even and smooth. So the reflection goes to the ceiling and uh, gives us a brightness. Where is that here? You can see it here. So the window, which is like here, the window is closed with the curtain, but the, uh, the part which is related to the light shelf is open. So the light will get here, will reflect to the light shelves and going to the ceiling and as you see we have the glare here but the glare is not in uh, in our eyes direction so, so it's not bothering it's just reflected to the ceiling and brings us the the brightness and uh, saving us from uh, expensive uh, electricity
uh, it's a panorama view from uh, for, uh, from the rooftop of that museum we talked about. And uh, the issue here was the thermal sensation because uh, the temperature inside this space is same, but uh, the, it's the color which make us uh, feeling uh, warmer or cooler deep down. And uh, I wanted to give you this experience to uh, see how the color can affect our, our feeling thermally. So we can remember that and use it in our design or if someone in your professional uh, in your career uh, wants to underestimate this this value you will you will you will know what's the reality so again here we have the transmission from the one color to the other color and it's surprisingly uh, effective you know just just you know just see the more fully the brain comes to life. So here is talking about the brain function and our health and its relation to the light and the way we present it to the space. And as you see at the right side, we have the Pantheon uh, picture and uh, it gets light from its the skylight or ellipse and uh, it's very dramatic and uh, it's like a, a dream it's not like we are looking to the uh, real space and if you have any question i'll be happy to answer your question <laughs>